All right, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to mention you all that don't forget that you can scan the QR code that is show on your table in the back of the chairs for filling the form. In it was a evaluation form, and you can just answering the following questions. And for those who are watching us through live streaming, don't forget that you can feel free to scan it through the screen. All right, and the next topic is future of the sustainability in global ruby sourcing by Mr. Dave Chetty, President and Chief Executive Officer from Fura Dames, please. Good morning, everyone. It's my absolute pleasure to be part of this conference, especially talking on the topic, which is not only close to my heart, but on the foundation of which the entire Fulagen has been set up. Before we dive into the topic, let me give you a brief introduction about Fura. A Fura is a color gemstone mining company, and it remains the only gemstone company that provides all the three major color gemstone, emerald, ruby, and sapphire. Founded in 2017, we are headquartered in Dubai, UAE. We started our journey in 2019 by acquiring an iconic emerald mine, Costco SA. Over the period of three years, we have not only built a geological understanding of the mine, but also we have extended the license by 30 years. And we remain one of the few miners in Colombia to have a large scale environmental license. I'm very excited to announce the, the construction of a 12 kilometer decline in Cosquays, which will set the tone for Cosquays to be the world's largest supplier of Colombian emerald. We expanded our portfolio by acquiring and consolidating a ruby licenses in Mozambique. In the middle of the COVID-2019, we completed the construction of our pilot wash pad, which helped us to deliver our inaugural auction. I'm very excited to announce the completion of our second wash plan, which will make Fura one of the world's largest supplier of ruby by December 2022. We then expanded our portfolio into sapphires by acquiring licenses in Australia. In less than two years, we have not only upgraded our wash plan, but we also delivered our inaugural sapphire auction, where we supplied just over 900,000 carats. The Australian sapphire mine will be known for supplying not only the blues, also, also the beautiful teals, the greens, and also party sapphires. We believe by September 2022, Australian sapphire mine will be the largest sapphire producing mine in the world. So now let's understand about sustainability. What is sustainability? People do business with profit in mind, but it's very important that in addition to profit, they also consider people and planet in mind. And it is a balancing act. In the olden days, if you would see, a companies used to find a balancing act by managing shareholders. But now the stakeholders have expanded beyond shareholders. A company needs to take care of shareholders, employees, community, governments, and customers. Okay, so what has changed? The consumer habits have changed significantly over the period of time. You would recollect in 2006, the Blood Diamond movie had entirely revolutionized the diamond jewelry industry. Right now, if you go and sit in the Starbucks, a normal customer would like to know that where the coffee beans are coming from. And we are dealing with a very luxurious product. So if a customer wants to know where the coffee is, is coming from, they would definitely would like to know where their ruby or emeralds are coming from. And why it matters? Because most of the retail brands and the chain have taken a mission that by certain years, they would definitely have sustainability in their supply chain platform. So it's about a time that we, as a gemstone industry, would take sustainability as an integral part of its business model. So let's understand, how does the ruby supply chain platform work? The first in the, in the chain are the producers group led by the large scale miners, the small scale miners or the informal players. Followed by them are the cutting and polishing companies, mainly based in Bangkok and the jewelry manufacturer, the retailers and the end consumers. They all are supported by labs, technological company and the standard setting bodies such as RJC or ISO. But we lay the foundation. It's very important to know that as a producer group, we are the first in the chain who has to set the standard right from the beginning. 
you can't imagine having burj khalifa without the foundation so the producer group are the most important group who have to initiate the sustainability right at the beginning let me show you some of the sustainability initiatives that we have taken over the course of 3 years when we started in colombia we saw there were a lot of talented informal miners we employed them and we gave them a formal employment during the covid pandemic 2019 when a lot of the countries were shut fura took a corporate decision not to terminate even a single employment in fact we did no salary reduction over the entire covid period some of the initiatives especially in colombia in colombia we had set up a community first fund which was directed to support around 8000 community members in mozambique when the country was facing a shortage of pp kit we imported pp from china and we supplied around 1 million pp kits one of the major initiative we took in colombia was to stop the disposal of the tailings to the river we also strengthened our supply chain platform by having a third party validation for the entire sale process and these are some of the initiatives that we at fura had taken i'm quite pr proud of a lot of the initiatives we have taken especially the community first fund we supported around 8000 community members during the difficult times the napula primary school we constructed this school even before we did our first auction in 2021 the fura training academy is going to support over 3000 community members in cosquis we also initiated a project called meals on wheels where we provide food to the needy near our castilian sapphire mine let's go to the second silos in the supply chain platform that is a cutting and polishing centers let's first understand the challenge they face the first and the foremost challenge is inconsistent supply in less than 7 years they have been getting a consistent supply from the two large scale organized players the total ruby supply is approximately 2 million of rough ruby as against a 140 million of rough diamonds that get annually supplied still industry is compared with the diamond industry there is also a need for a lot of marketing support and also there is a need to increase the education on sustainability for these businesses so what is the most important element that the cutting and polishing centers need to bear in mind they need to focus certification plus they need to think beyond pigeon blood the ruby cutting and polishing center can take a lot of learning from the diamond sector especially the diamond cutting and polishing businesses their assurance program includes a business responsibility and a social responsibility the business responsibility has a very robust kyc policies in place the disclosure especially the disclosure between the treatments is so important for for them that a lot of those models can be can be inherited by the ruby cutting and polishing center so product security they have a mechanism to control and prevent the product substitution in the social responsibility platform they have a very robust mechanism to support employees in the social responsibility they have a program to support their employees plus they also support the children to go to the school and also they have a very robust human right policy within their business let's go to the third silos in the supply chain platform that's the jewelry manufacturer most of the jewelry manufacturers have got well established formal setup what they really need to do is to expand the platform that already exists in the gold and the diamond jewelry into the color gemstone space they need to work with the upstream and the downstream partner to build the traceability in the supply chain model let's understand what the fourth silo can contributes that is the retailers one of the most important thing that we believe the retailers can do is invest in training even now if you go to some of the retailers and go and ask the sales staff where does the emerald come from or where does the ruby come from for the emerald comes from colombia and all ruby comes from myanmar which we know is not the fact so it is really important that the retailers invest in the sales staff training and this is where even the miners can join hand with the retailers to put together a very robust this is where the miners and the retailers can join hands to put together a very robust staff training programs 
Let me conclude this talk by saying that one of the key takeaway from this forum is to put together a realistic time target to put a sustainability as a key business model in each of the silos. But we need to bear in mind that this evolution take time. It needs a lot of patience, but it is going to help to build the industry. Once again, I would like to thank Sumit and the entire GIT team for putting together this conference, especially in the difficult time. I would also like to urge all the participants to take sustainability very seriously and make it as a part of the business culture. I also look forward to meeting all of you in the near future. Thank you very much. Thank you. So to make profits by taking care of people, the sustainability is matter. So next, who's looking for the trading opportunities? Don't miss this topic. All right, ladies and gentlemen, next will be Mr. Amir Samun, the chairman of the Safari Capital Group, will be here for Sri Lanka, the island of gemstone trading opportunities.